Hi, we're here with Estelle again. Uh, Hi. We, we met you last time at Upcon. Yes. Hi, Estelle. But I know last time you didn't have your full uniform. Yes, this time I have my full costume as my character. And my character's name is Leopardina. I'm a Sar, which is uh, big cat people in the game, like the lions, tigers, leopards, that kind of thing. Um, and this game is it's the mead game once yes. again. As I can see, you've got all your weapons yes, around this one we have that all are weapons. actually quite uh, soft and squishy. So, yes. so they look bad, but, but shouldn't hurt yeah. too much. No, they're not supposed to hurt. That's the whole point. The point is to have fun. Good. You know, good. you there are rules to how to fight, so you don't hurt people, and so everybody can just have fun. Yeah. And that's the whole point to have a whole weekend of just fun. Good, good. And but it's also nice. You saw it uh, let you you know get yeah. out and actually participate yeah. in slightly more real fights as opposed to yeah. ro rolling dice and all, yeah, all yeah. It's, just that. It's, it's for those people that think that the tabletop games are just a little not realistic enough. This you create a character for yourself, you can be a fighter, a wizard, a rogue, you know, whatever you want to be. You can dress up as your character and you know just have a whole weekend of fun of worrying of nothing else. Cool. You just get away from all your problems for that weekend. Um, and I know you're saying like your next one's in August, I think. No, it's in October. October, sorry. Yes. Uh, it's the 14th to 16th of October. Yes. Um, is there a website that you guys can... Yes, it's www.meadsa.co.za. All right, no, cool. Then you go to the main site and just go to events. And under events, you will get all the information. And the first page has a lot of email addresses for new people that just want to ask questions so they can email everybody, bug them as much as you want, and find out what you need to find out. I've noticed all you guys are actually quite friendly. So, yeah. so the guys Everybody's really willing to help everybody. So if you can even just you know pay and go for the weekend and make your character on that day. It just helps to have a bit of an idea of what you want for your character so you know what to pack to dress up with. All right, cool. Is the dressing up quite an important piece of the whole me thing? It, it makes it more realistic, you know, because we're trying to have a medieval fantasy setting. So obviously, we try. If you get a light, you try to have a kind of lantern-looking thing, or you know, we just try to keep it realistic because it just makes it more fun. Mm. Okay, getting more into character, you're yeah. actually then enjoying the game more and actually yeah. participating a lot more. Yeah, because then everything seems more real and it's easier to play your character than everybody else's phone ringing every now and again or something. All right, cool. Okay. Thank it's, you very much. It's a pleasure. We're here with uh, Cynthia from Sinbin. Hi, Cynthia, how's it going? Hi, I'm fun here. Good, good. Um, you're telling me how you actually were involved in the creation of the mascot and the logo for Icon this year. Um, what, I know you've got a picture here, quick, sorry, I'm just gonna pick this up. Um, and you've actually got a life mask on. Uh, Aideen? Cool. Uh, how did you go about doing that? Uh, um, well, actually, uh, Grant approached me and said, well, this year's Steampunk, would you like to submit a logo? Um, did a few sketches, uh, handed in two um, ideas, and he chose Aideen, who is an a Steampunk adventurer. And, and here cool. she is. <laughs> Um, uh, did you guys make the entire costume as well? Uh, yes, I did. Um, I <laughs> did the illustration for the logo, and then I actually took that illustration as my basis and made her costume from that. Cool. I know yeah. you guys are quite involved in the making of all the costumes and stuff like that. I know you've got a couple behind you, and over there you've got uh, some, some steampunk goggles and stuff like that. Uh, where can people find you? Uh, um, at the moment, wait. The website went live yesterday. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, www.sin-bin.co.za. Cool. Um, the products will be listed up at the end of August, but we are linked to Facebook where all the products are there in the albums. Okay. Are you on Facebook, what, what would they search for? Uh, Sinbin Graphic and Fashion Design. Awesome. Okay. And what type of, is it, uh, what type of outfits and stuff do you make? Is well, the outfits is just something that I'm branching into now. Okay. But we basically, if you can think it, I can try and make it. And if I can't make it, I can find it. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. And what other things are you then doing uh, besides the outfits? Um, well, I do a lot of accessories. So there's belts, um, like utility belts, um, corsets. Um, there's button badges, goggles, uh, top hats. <laughs> Um, oh, the, there's the ears. Okay, so and essentially all, all the things in, in, involved in dressing up for, yes, for these events. Yes, anything for dressing up, whether it's costume, for LARPing, or just everyday wear. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you.
We're here with uh, David and Ray. Uh, David's a freelance uh, design, design and artist. Uh, illustrator. illustrator. Yeah. Sorry? And Ray, you said you're a lecturer at uh, Greenpoint? Uh, Greenside Design, design Centre. Hi. Um, well, let's start with talking about your art show that you do here. Um, um, these are actually old pieces. Um, it's for a comic book that came out about what, four years ago All right. uh, called Legend of Isis through Blue Order Productions. Uh, since then, I've basically uh, I, I went into video game art. Um, I've oh, done okay, art cool. for uh, NCSoft's Dungeon Runners and uh, the new game coming out uh, called Hulk Hogan's Main Event. Um, so, like, I'm, I'm more of a concept artist at the moment, but trying to break back into comics. All right, Thanks cool. Uh, is there a lot of demand for uh, graphic uh, game design in South Africa? Um, in South Africa, it's actually an emerging market, but um, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons we, we, we did form this art community yeah. is to... Legioning. Just to explain what you guys are talking yeah. about. You guys have formed a uh, community for artists and yeah. stuff called legioninc.com. Yes. And that's the website as well. Yeah. Uh, do you want to just tell me what, what you were trying to do with that? And oh, uh, basically what we wanted to do initially was um, get the artists together because um, over in the States and in most first world countries like London and even Asia, uh, they have a large community of artists who thrive off of each other. Um, so the, the, the industry is very large. There's, like, there's video game art, there's storyboarding for movies and TV shows, um, costume design and all, and all, all the different factions. And they stand together and form it like a very, very large hub. Through knowing some person, you can get into the creative industry. Uh, in this country, the gaming market is, 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 is blowing up currently for iPad, like mobile gaming, yeah, which yeah. is a very good entry-level stuff. And um, we have a, a large uh, influx of people looking for talent. So they're starting to look in India and they're starting to look in South Africa as well. So internationally, we're getting a lot of exposure, especially after like a certain movie called District 9 yes. uh, that came out a couple of years ago. So uh, that, that's, that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do is like bring everyone together and start learning off of each other, start making contact in those, in those circles yeah. early on. Yeah, the, the, sorry, yeah. the, the main problem was we found that, the, at least in the South African community, that um, the arts was very factionalized. Like people tend to be quite elitist with each other and that kind of stuff. So yeah. they don't, um, it's, and also it's mainly because they don't know of other artists. Um, up, in, up until we started our forum, like there have been there have been a few that have come and gone and that sort of stuff. But the mainstay was Deviant Art, uh, which is an international art community. But we decided to to use that kind of same similar a similar format to Deviant Arts, um, where we could then obviously get all the um, all the various different artists together um, and then yeah I mean they can uh, it's a place where you not only can you express yourself but you can also get feedback we offer advice on everything from changing your art style through to how to charge for freelance jobs and all sorts of stuff so we cater for everyone from high school to students to working professionals that's no, very cool I'm, I'm very excited to see some of the things that's ever coming through um, it's always saying we don't collaborate enough in this country yes. so I'm very excited that you guys are doing this um, do you want to just give your website again so uh, well the website that, that, that the artists or anyone actually yeah. actually uh, in the creative field that is people who are in movies or in music or in costume design or in prop design is uh, legioninc.com. So it's legion I N K, not incorporated, but like legionink.com. Uh, as well, mine is it's it's uh, on Deviant Art. Just look for David Friedrich with an F. Right. Uh, it, it's. It's very or I'm sure they can also go from Legion yeah, they can Inc. also go from find Legion you and then from there they yeah. get to where you are. Yeah, definitely. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. We're here with Paul from Underground. Hi, Paul. How's it going, man? Good, good. Eh? Do you want to tell us about uh, who you guys are? Uh, Basically, we're a Warhammer club, which cool. is a tabletop uh, gaming system. Uh, majority nerds, I would say, yeah. but uh, we love it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much our main system. It's it's Lord of the Rings. Warhammer 40k. The 40k is more futuristic. Yeah, yeah. 40,000 years in the future is just nothing but war, that kind of stuff. And the fantasy is a variant of that, but sort of olden day, sort of knights and goblins and that kind of thing. Yeah, I know the Warhammer actually seems to be quite big around. Yeah, um, we did a recording last time at Apcon as well. Yeah, 40k uh, is huge. Yeah. Fantasy is still. It, it used to be big. I think there was a lot of sort of players going across to War Machine and that kind of thing. So we're trying to promote fantasy and get that up again. I still think that's a cool gaming system, and I mean, it's still a fun game to play. So right, yeah, cool. I see you got a lot of the kits here to sell and stuff like that. Um, uh, is that part of Underground, or is that a separate thing that you guys are doing? 
What, having youngsters? No, the, the, the kits and stuff that you guys are selling. Are you selling this as underground or? Yeah, it's pretty much underground. Okay, cool. Uh, is there a website or stuff where the guys can get hold of you? There is uh, www.theunderground.co.za. And uh, yeah, check us out online. It's mainly just an e-shop. We're still changing that up and then hopefully have more forums and that kind of stuff going on. So it's more user friendly and that kind of right. thing. Is okay. it also where they're going to find out about the club and That's where it. you guys are meeting? That's it. The underground to us is more club based. I mean, we, we obviously offer the models for mm -hmm. the guys, but our, like, our main thing is just to have something for the youth and, and something for the enthusiasts to come and chill. We are moving to a new premises, which has got a lot more space, pool table, chill area, table set up permanently, that kind of thing. So oh, just, nice. just kind of making it more of a hangout for the guys, you know, some, someplace different where people can go. And also you know? getting it more set up and stuff so the guys can just come in and play and That's it. speed up the system so it's actually a lot more fun. You actually do more gaming time. That's it. And guys can actually just come in and, as you say, see everything set up. I mean, it just blows them away more. And I mean, people are more keen to play as well. Cool. You know, as opposed to just well, a small Also, whereabouts are you guys based? Uh, we, we were close to Northgate Shopping Center. But uh, we're moving just up the road into a residential area. Nice little quiet shopping center. But we is way more space, 170 squares. So, yeah, I think we're going to have much more fun there. It's a little more low-key as well. So guys can get up to mischief as well. Cool. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you much. Shit, man. Cool. Okay. Ek sê so saam met Henry Koen weer, ons het toch een aand geïnterviewd op Letstok Afrikaans, hoe gaan we met jou? Ah, goed. Goeie dag so ver. Is het? Ja. Gaan we lekker bezig? Ja, redelijk. Was jy gister ook hier geweest? Ja, ek was gister ook hier so geweest. Toe was het redelijk stil geweest. Maar vandag, ja. Ons huis, maar ja. Vandag lyk het nog al bezig hier so. Ja, is baie voete vandag. Sê my, selfde soos jy vir ons gewaas het daai aand? Ja, baie van die selfde goeders. Daar is een of twee nieuwe goeders. Ons het specifiek steampunk themed customs gemaakt vir vandag. Ernstig? Ja. Hy part uit? Ja, ons het klomp pakkies oopgemaak, sets oopgemaak, saam gegooi, gebreinstorm gebouw en so aan. Dit klink as wat lekker was. Was lekker. Bekie frustreerd wat jy mooie goeders maak, maar dit het goeie resultate gehad. Dit is mooi. Ek sien jy het weer by jou website geupgereid. Ja. Het jy nou bekie oor gedoen of wat jy het gedoen? Nee, ons is bezig om een paar bugs en so aan te fix op die website, net om seker te maak dat daar nie allerhande snakse probleme meer inkom nie. Hy is nog steeds by Blocks Universe? Ja. Tot zeer dat zei hy? Ja. En hy is Blocks met die X? Ja. Soos laatst keer. Wel voorspoed, ek hoop jy skou gaan goed vir jou verder. Ach, baie dankie. Ons hoop om jy weer een hand al by ons te heen. Dis raag. Lekker hoor, gaan goed. We're here at Icon with Marissa, who's helping out at the stand here that's doing all the mugs and the t-shirts and stuff. And you were just busy telling me about all the things that you're actually involved here at Icon. Yes. Well, I do the LARPing, which is the live action role playing. I do role playing, which is uh, just tabletop dice and a piece of paper with your character sheet. Um, I do, I've just started war gaming. I do PC or platform, any platform gaming, you know, PC, PS3. And uh, I do anime as well. I watch lots of anime and uh, TV series. So yeah, I'm quite, nice. the, quite the geek. <laughs> Pretty much so, and I see you actually, so obviously you're involved with pretty much everyone here at Icon. Uh, in I know some a large quantity another. of the people here, um, yes. And that you were telling me how that's sort of how you got involved, uh, helping out here? Yes, um, uh, the guy who runs uh, Icon, well there's a committee, but uh, Grant owns uh, Outer Limits. This is his stall, he, mm. he, he, him and the rest of the council organize everything, and we're always short of uh, volunteers yeah. and stuff. So um, I was like, well, I go. I want to come to Icon and well, this is a good opportunity to see everybody because I live far, far away. <laughs> and, and get involved in some of it. Um, I must ask you just quickly about your chain, chain. that you're busy wearing. Yes. Uh, uh, with a, uh, sorry, just... Uh, <laughs> a leash. It's leash. actually a leash. It's actually a bit of a fetish thing. Uh, I have a, a, a collar fetish. The collar actually belongs to a friend of mine who bought it for me. He, it's just not on at the moment. And he's just left me with a chain. Um, it's, yeah, uh, I like it. Okay, cool. People like to drag me around by it though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now I see there's a lot of people all dressed up, and so which is uh, quite a big part of this stuff. Yes. And um, uh, well, a lot of the geek community, uh, we do like the whole uh, dressing up, uh, being someone you're not. It's a nice escapism. And this year's theme is steampunk. I'm a steampunk fanatic. Um, there's so much that there's steampunk bands. And yes, no, it's very, very cool. There's a girl who's actually wearing this this logo. Yes, we've she's chatted to her down there by, uh, on yeah, the other side. She's quite a, awesome, yeah. Cool. Um, since you're so involved with all these things, what's the best way that people can get involved if they want to start? Um, well, attend the conventions, talk to people, 
the internet is amazing for uh, all of this. Uh, I, that's how I stay in contact with a lot of the people is the internet. Um, yeah, I would say internet or just talk to people, attend conventions, just keep your eyes and ears open. There's lots of advertising that does go into, you know. Getting involved in yeah, all these things. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's really easy. You just have to talk to the right person. Uh, or go, you can even go to like a, a gaming store, a store is also, you just talk to those people there. And advertising. Right, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. We're here with uh, Garen from HC Embroidery. Hi, Garen. How's it going? Hi. Nice to meet you. Good. Um, we see you here busy selling all this armor and stuff like that. Uh, uh, do you want to tell me a bit about it? Uh, we sell um, replica swords as well as functional swords, as well as um, knives and um, long daggers. We also do um, embroidery from the ATC embroidery side where we do custom embroidery and um, custom um, hats, bags, whatever. Which we're usually aimed at the sci-fi market. We're located in Benoni um, and we generally do store work. That's Michael. Cool. Do you want to tell me a bit about the swords that you have okay. here? Um, we have a range of display swords, starting with a Western German broadsword, um, a replica katana, a katana that's done from the um, Bleach um, anime series. Then we have our um, more functional stuff based on the martial arts, um, Chinese broadswords, short ninjutsu swords. We have paramilitary blades as well as hunting knives. And then we have a range of folding knives um, done from um, self-defense to what they call everyday carry knives, as well as um, your functional bali song and other um, Filipino types. Cool. Uh, where can the guys find you? Uh, generally, we um, operate from the, um, the best place would probably be the um, craft markets in Benoni and Boxburg. Okay. We generally work um, out of there, and we do um, various stores across the country. Cool. Do you guys have a website or something? Um, yes, you can find us at ATC Embroidery on Facebook. All right. Go. Cool. Thanks. Thank you much. We're here with Anik, uh, who's one of the organizers in Meet, one of the admins there. Hi, Anik. How's it going? I'm um, very well, thank you. How good, are you doing? Good, good. Uh, do you want to start telling us a bit more about Mead, what it is, um, and how do people get involved for now? Mead is a weekend-long live action role-playing event, which means that people go there, they dress up in costume, they have a character they play, and they interact with all of the other ple people that attend Mead. So you go and you fight monsters and you cast spells and you know you just basically you play a character. You take um, one weekend out of your daily normal humdrum life and you enter a fantasy world where you can be essentially whoever you want to be. Yes, and I know one of the nice things, it's actually, it's because it's live action, it's not sitting around a board pretending to be someone. You guys dress up, you exactly. guys have, well, when I say real weapons, uh, padded real weapons yes. to you guys, spells, I know you guys throw things and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we have that. little spell packets that are just to show you that we're casting a spell. If your spell packet hits, the spell has hit the person. So oh. I can heal you up, or you can put you to sleep, or and then when the spell packet hits, whatever I've yelled out, you then enact. So it's very much about actually playing the game, not watching it happen. Sort of, an, it's not all in your imagination the way a tabletop game is. So it adds a lot more. Now I would imagine it makes it a lot more exciting, and the guys get a lot yes. more involved in all the rest of it. They certainly do. You wouldn't believe it. So people get very, very into their characters, and, and just as I said, take a break from from your normal life. Yeah, cool. You guys were telling me you guys are going to be starting a, a new world or new uh, new you, setting. You, new setting. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell me a bit more about what that is and uh, which guys, what the concept behind that is? Sure. Tales of Tiana is affiliated with Mead, but basically what we found is, you know, people want to do different things. Um, you want to play different games. So we've got the original Meadal setting, which is what's called high fantasy. All right. You play lords and ladies. There are multiple baronies, multiple um, different uh, places you can come from. Tales of Tiana is set as low fantasy, which means you're commoners, you all come from the same kingdom, and it's very much role-playing intensive. So it's very much about becoming your character and playing your character, um, advancing your character, you know, having aims and goals and sort of going out and, and actually achieving them for your character. All right, that's quite nice. So I'd yeah. imagine also if you guys are wanting to start, they can start now with the current mead or with yes. the one. Yeah. Um, but also if they want to start with a whole bunch of people starting a new game, that's also going to be a nice one to start with, which you said starting in about April. Yes, it's starting in April. The next mead event is in October. Okay. Um, and then there'll be one more of the, the original current. mead in the beginning of the year and then we're moving on to Tales of Tiana and then we'll alternate so you can play both games you can play one game uh, whatever suits you basically cool. but how often do you guys play? 
approximately every three months. Um, sometimes we have a little bit of a longer break, especially over winter, because mm, then yes. we all freeze. Um, but otherwise, once every three months is the approximate cool. duration. Are you going to increase it uh, timing with the new game, or is it still going to be one time? We're spot? going to be running about five events next year, all so right, there'll be so a slight it's, increase. It's growing, yeah. which is quite nice. Yes, very and It's much. easy for the guys to get involved and stuff. Absolutely. Where can the guys find you? Uh, you can find us on Mead SA, which is our website, meadsa.co.za. Uh, there's also Medieval Adventures on Facebook, and you can find links to everything there as well. All right, awesome. Thank you very much for speaking to us. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Hi, we are here with Grant again, um, chatting about Icon here. Yeah, I know you're organizing it. Last time we chatted to you, and it's now live and all the rest of it. How's it going so far? Um, so far, so good. Um, I think the lack of petrol is hurting us slightly, yeah, but remember. most of the people have been saving up money and saving up their time and they leave for uh, a year, so they're here and more of them will be arriving all through the day and more people tomorrow. I know, um, I've, I've been wandering around, it seems to be mm. even busier than it was last year, which is... Um, technically right. I think it's a little quieter, but this yeah, I've, the year's blurred, <laughs> considering this is year number 20 for me. Oh, okay, so we've been doing um, this for quite a while now. Quite a while. <laughs> Apparently we must ask you about armour. You're the person, uh, the guys at the meat table. I'm not sure why you need to ask me about armor. Oh, okay, I, no, do, no, no. I do wear some of it at mead, a oh, little okay. bit, but I'm a Templar, so I don't get to wear lots of armor. Right. I don't know what the... Oh, okay, I just know you awesome. Most of the girls today are actually wearing armor. You've noticed they get laced into it. Some, some yes. of it becomes quite intimidating. <laughs> quite, uh, what's it? No, I'm going to go the weapons of mass destruction. Don't think about those things. Never. Calm mind. Um, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> okay. Uh, when you look there, you totally go blank. No, we're not talking about Brindley, although he is tall and pretty. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I just I just floored the interviewer. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, no, I just told him not to think about those things, and he obviously was. <laughs> what are we doing? Are, are we just standing? Like I don't know. What are we doing? Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Oh. No, one, on, one on each side. Oh, okay. Yeah. You guys can oh, come in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm just going to like line dance my way towards the... <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Now we well, see why you're distracted. Yes, I can see why we're distracted. <laughs> There's a lot of dress up this year, which has been quite nice, especially with your theme of steampunk. Um, we can see the girls out in the outfits. Do you want to tell us a bit more about your outfits quickly? I can start. Um, right. I'm cosplaying the mascot this year, Aideen. She's an adventurer and an explorer, and she was created by Cynthia of Sinbin Designs. Cool. Yeah, I know yeah. we were chatting to you earlier. the entire outfit, yes. Very cool. And yourself? Well, I'm just a fan of steampunk, and um, yeah, so I just put some stuff together, and this is how I normally dress, <laughs> except for the hat. <laughs> the hat I borrowed from Sinbin. So. <laughs> yeah, Sinbin um, actually runs a business that creates these outfits, and she also did the logo for us this year. Yeah, so everything you saw in all of our advertising, our mugs, our t-shirts, is all her fault, as you see. Yeah. It's cool, so I must say it's that, a very nice design that, this year. Um, that looks a lot better than that, but we won't blame Sinbin for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something about real life that it comes out a bit better. Um, what else are you guys up to this weekend? Okay, well, um, in the hall over there, which you can't see, but I can, um, we're running a Magic the Gathering regional tournament, our last qualifiers for our national tournament, which will be happening end of August. Right. Uh, we send four people over to Worlds every year. This year, I believe they're playing in France. Okay, last year, cool. I think we came... About 16,042 teams. No, it's not too bad. Not which, too bad. for a small country with a small number of players, isn't too bad at all. We're running in the marquee behind, uh, behind us over there. We're running uh, role playing. At the moment, I think we're running Cthulhu and Werewolf. Oh, okay. Uh, on the other side of the halls, we're running uh, a Warhammer competition, which is miniatures, uh, the grown men playing with little toys. Um, we're also running a 40K one, which is science fiction, and a war machine. Uh, we're running various board game competitions inside as well, um, and some other card gaming like L5R and Vampire. And anywhere there's a, a small corner, we have gamers doing something, yeah, hopefully no, not illegal. 
quite, quite busy out here. I know you're supposed to be having a, a boffing tournament at some point. Tomorrow we have guys. a boffing tournament where people are going to run around, hit each other, pool noodle swords. Cool. You guys have a, com a comedian through tonight, which should be quite uh, we've nice. We've got three comedians tonight, three yeah. professional stand-up comics, who all happen to be role players. And, well, we're hoping for around about 100 people attending. And uh, the comedians like it because uh, our audience of nerds are normally more intelligent than the average audience, so they actually get some of their jokes. <laughs> cool. Well, with that, thank you very much for chatting to us. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Sorry about going blush. We're here at Icon with Sean, uh, who chatted to us last time at Upcon. How's it going? It's going well. Um, we're having some good gaming today. I've had, uh, I've had nothing but fun all day so all right. far. Cool. So you've been running around and grabbing lunch very quickly yeah. in between all the rest of the stuff. Yeah, well, we don't get much time between the games and stuff sometimes, so we've got to really run every now and again. Cool. Uh, do you want to just go over, once again, what, what Warhammer is and just give us a breakdown um, again? Well, Warhammer is basically it's tabletop gaming where you purchase your miniatures from the shop and then you will paint them yourselves. And then the game's based on dice and measuring tape. You move your models around and you use dice to perform actions. It's eventually, it's, it's like the, the classic D&D, &D, but now you've got actual figurines that you're moving around. Yeah. So you can actually visualize what's occurring. Yes, you can do a lot more visualization with it. Um, it's actually more closer to the computer strategy games than it would be to D&D. &D. There's... Um, it's just instead of um, the computer solving every issue there is, um, we use dice to um, work out what's happening in the game. And do all the probability and all that. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you were telling me that uh, this is the last event for the year? Yeah, this is our last big event for the year, this side um, up in Joburg. Uh, there's no more big two-day events. There will be a couple of small one-day tournaments, but this is the last big one for us. Till next year. Um, so once again, where, where can the guys get hold of you? Um, look, if they want to find out anything about Warhammer, you can just go on to www.warhammergenerals.co.za. That's got everything they'll ever need to know. Shops, um, where to play, advice, everything. All right, cool. Thank you very much. No problem. Hi, we're here with Calvin from uh, War Machine. Yeah. How's it going? All right, and you? Good, good. Good, man. Do you want to tell us a bit more about, okay, first of all, what is War Machine? Okay, War Machine is, okay, it's actually two games. It's War Machine and Hordes. They work together. Um, they made by Privateer Press, they're a skirmish type game, okay? So it's not a big scale game like you see with Warhammer Fantasy, where okay. you've got lots of models, movement trays and all that type of thing. It's not like Warhammer 40,000 where you've got your tanks and stuff. In this game, we run um, with what we call beasts or jacks, okay? They're big behemoth type creatures. They come across the board and they smack your face in. The motto of this game is play like you've got a pair. Um, the difference between the two games is our game doesn't really require too many models. In an average tournament list, I have 22 models. Okay. Um, and it's basically built up around your warcaster, which is like your king. If you kill the king, it's like chess, you win the game type thing. Yeah. And then what happens is he controls these jacks and you have the units and everybody else that run around with right. them. So it's similar to the others, but except it's... Uh Quite a bit cheaper to get involved. Uh, get yeah, in. it's, it's it's the price. The price difference is quite a bit, you know, quite a bit different because you don't need that many models. Um, you're not looking at buying twenty odd, you know, what, just for one unit twenty odd models. You're looking at about six to ten models max in a unit. Um, the, there's also starter boxes which get you into the game. They're normally averaging about between 350 to 400 odd. And that's basically what you need to start the game. So it's easier to get into the game as well because it comes with the quick start rules inside the pack. And you're basically looking at everything all in one go. Cool, that sounds good. Also sounds like your games are a bit quicker. So you can actually get through quite a couple more games during, during an evening. And yeah, um, in, in the tournament base side, you're looking at an hour and a half per game. Okay. okay, where at the other systems you're looking at any between two hours and three hours for a game. So what that means is like the tournament that we're running today, we'll have four games in the day and we'll still get finished at a decent hour and everybody can sit around and talk. So it's pretty awesome because you've got that aspect where you're not really rushed. If you do want to, like in my back, you know, in my garage, I can sit and I can play games all night and it'll take me three hours to play a game, but that's us just sitting and having yeah, fun. Tournament-wise, you're looking at an hour and a half, which is, gives you enough time to do everything. So it's much quicker, you get right. more games in. That's very cool. Where yeah. can the guys find out more about this? Um, okay, we do have a local forum, which is warmachinegenerals.co.za. Okay. okay, that's got all our tournament uh, rankings on it because we've actually got national 
national rankings, which we put in ourselves. And then we've got um, a forum that we also, there's actually a link to the forum on that site, and then that will then take you to the War Machine and also all the tournaments. It's actually a generalized forum. So it's for Warhammer, for all the other systems, Blood Bowl, everything else. So it's a general South African forum for War Machines and War, uh, Warhammer and War Machine. Um, if you want to, there's also a couple of shops in South Africa that are stocking it, cool. and that is Extreme Gaming for Outer Limits, and there's a Tribal Tribal Games, which is tribalgames.co.za. They're basically based in a club in Bedford View, and that's all that's really stocking at the moment because it's pretty new into South Africa. It really boomed about a year ago when the game got into Mark II. It went from Mark I to Mark II. It's where they re-revised everything, condensed everything, and put it back into the, you know, gave it back to everybody, all condensed and nice and neat. So since Mark II, we've seen a boom. We've got players that are looking for stock. It's we, we, the local suppliers can't even keep up. It's that nice. It's cool. So it's growing quite nice. It's growing quite lacquer. Yeah, I'm pretty chuffed. Uh, being a press ganger, it's awesome. It's All right. the best. Um, you're also just telling me quickly that the one advantage is when you guys get an update, it's across all, all the things as opposed yeah. to just one um, action or something. What happens is uh, when we get an update, instead of just being one army, so if your, your typical games, they'll just give you one faction is an update. This game, we have an update for everybody. So all the War Machine armies got an update in Wrath, which was released two months ago. And Domination is for Hordes. That's going to be released in spring, our time, fall for the, for the US. Okay. And everybody will get another couple of units and couple of models. So you don't see any power drip, dip or creep or anything all like right. that. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Not a problem. Thank you. Hi, we're here with Francois from Magic the Gathering. Uh, you are one of the judges or, or something here for the tournament? I am uh, the head judge for this tournament at um, Icon today. So we are playing a range of events this weekend. One which is currently underway is the national qualifier. The top 12 people that win this tournament will enter into a nationals event which will take place at the end of August. Last weekend of August, we are playing the national event right. in Magic the Gathering. Very cool. Do you want to just give me a, big round, a quick round, on, round up on what Magic the Gathering is? Magic the Gathering is the oldest and most popular trading card game. It's a fantasy game where two people play each other representing uh, cards. They've right. got cards on both sides and... Cards on both sides. So Magic the Gathering is the uh, trading card game that is um, played between two people where cards represent the army that you use to battle your opponent. Cool. If I understand correctly, um, you both, both basically have decks which get shuffled and you, and you then take X amount of cards from the top of the deck and that gives you your initial army and, and, and things that you can do? So the way the game is played, it's, uh, we use a turn-based system where each player gets a turn to play resources represented by these cards, to make creatures represented by these cards, and then in such a way attack the opponent to bring his life total down to 20, from 20 down to zero. And once zero you've won the game? The, the, the person that's on zero loses oh, the yeah, game. Yeah. Um, cool. What else can you tell me about the game? Um, we are playing this game throughout South Africa. We've got various centers um, from Bloemfontein to Durban. Uh, we play in Cape Town, Stellenbosch, uh, even up in Gauteng these days we do some events. Cool. Usually uh, the event is about three to four hours long. A player is required to bring his own cards to the event, except for special events uh, which happen once every four months where we have a new set of cards coming out that players can play as well. Right, cool. How do the guys find out more about you? The best place uh, to go for all magic-related events, uh, magicthegathering.com, and South Africa has got a dedicated, uh, um, dedicated site as well at magicsa.co.za. All right, cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right, cool. we, uh, we're busy looking at one of the War Machine games right here in front of us. I've got Calvin here who's going to tell me a bit more about what's actually going on. W what, what am I seeing in front of me? Okay, at the moment you're checking, uh, you're seeing two factions. You've got Menoth on the right and you've got Kador on the left. Menoth are our zealoty type people in the gaming system. They, uh, they're all about fire and everything like that. And then on the left, 
uh, left hand side you have Kador, which are our Soviet Union type people, make everything bigger and stronger. Okay. So we got um, Menoth at the moment. What happens is those big jacks, the, yeah. the, the bigger models, yeah. those are your war jacks. Okay. They are controlled by the smaller models. Now your smaller mo smaller models are your king piece in this game. If you okay. lose your smaller model, you've basically lost the game because once you lose your warcaster, all the jacks go inert. So they lose their controller and they just basically flop over. Basically, the person giving the command stops yeah, being available. Yeah, ev ev everything. Yeah, they basically in in story wise they are linked to that that okay. caster. Okay, what what's happening is the player on the right he's busy casting a spell onto the small. Uh, Warcaster of the Cato faction, and he's busy. We always roll two dice in this game, but you can spend focus to actually boost the dice. So he's just spent focus to boost to hit her to make sure that he hits her because her defense is pretty high. So he's just hit her with a spell and he's doing damage to her. Plus, there's a foc there's a token next to her which indicates that she's on fire because in this game there's continuous effects. So we have a continuous effect which will last until the following turn or later, depending on if you roll a one or a two on the next phase. So he has rolled a three there and he's rolled a five. So that means the fire hasn't gone out. So that means that caster is still on fire and that big jack is still on fire. So That's there is a chance that she's going to take more damage now, even in his turn. Okay, cool. Uh, what are these uh, little distance stuff I'm seeing lying around? Okay, the discs are, that's our token markers. Okay, in the game, everything works off a focus or fury, depending on what system you're playing, hordes or war machine. Now, focus is the little tokens, and the, what that does is it allows you to boost, it allows you to cast spells, it allows you to run, to charge. It's basically the mechanic that allows your jacks to do all the cool stuff that makes this game awesome. Because in this game, a jack can walk up to another jack, and if he's got two open fists, he can pick him up and double and throw him. If he wants to, he can slam a jack. If you want to, you can, you can headbutt it and knock it down. All there's right, there's cool. all these cool abilities that this game you know, incorporates. And, and basically, each of those abilities you manage to have a cost, and you yeah, pay it with that. That's it. You pay one to do these power attacks, which are pretty cool. All right. Um, I've also seen these cards in front of the people. What, what is involved with that? Okay. Each model has a card. Okay. okay? And the card has their damage tracks on it. So what happens is a warcaster, so the normal king type model, they normally just have a normal damage track from right to left and it has 15 odd boxes. Once they've de taken all that damage, they're dead, they're off the board. Then what you have in the jacks is you have a grid for the jack. And what happens every time the jack takes damage, you have to see where on the grid this jack has actually been hit because it could be randomized if he's dodging. It, it, it takes into play real life type stuff. So what happens there is if you roll damage on a certain aspect and you take out a certain, there's a chance that you can take out a certain block, which means that that thing gets disabled. So on a jack you normally have a left arm, a right arm, the cortex which is the brain, and then the movement, because you could also take out the movement. Now if you lose any of those aspects, it means a certain thing, like taking out a weapon means that you roll one less dice, which means you're not going to hit a lot. Taking out movement means that you become slower, you can't run, you can't charge, you can't do all the fun things. And moving your cortex, you've lost your brain which means you can't assign focus to the jack to make him do all those fun, okay. funky things. Right. Um, I do see that you guys write here on whiteboard markers, uh, and it's plastic, so you can just erase yeah. it for the next game. Oh, that's um, it, yeah. You are just telling me just don't some poor guy use a permanent marker once. Yeah, um, the cards themselves, you can actually write on the cards themselves, but yeah. we put them in plastic sleeves because it keeps your card cleaner yeah. for much longer. And yeah, if you are using your card, don't use permanent marker because you will have a hassle. Uh, you'll have to go and buy new cards. The I cards do come with the models, which is also something that I should sort nice. of point out. Can, can you get uh, new cards if you damage your card? Um, the problem at the moment is if you want new cards, you're going to have to buy a deck. And okay. a, a deck of cards is not what you want to buy if you just want to replace one. But that's why you would normally buy two battle boxes. So you've got friends or somebody, and there's a big community. So you can always find a replacement card somewhere in the community. And ask me for help. That's it. Uh, cool. The War Machine community is big. It's friendly. Always willing to help. Oh, very cool. Okay, what's happening at the moment is he's busy attacking the big crusader there, the big yeah. blue jack. And he has just does, you can always make your initial attack. So he's made two attacks. But what he's done now is he's spent focus to make another attack because he needs to ensure that that jack is completely dead so that it doesn't beat him back. Otherwise, he's going to be in a bit of trouble next turn. So he's hit the model, he's done damage, now he rolls for where it's, where it's going to put the damage down. So the guy's marking the damage and hopefully he should do enough to disable the jack in a way that it won't be able to be fully effective and attack him completely next turn. Um, also what happens in this game 
is yeah. your Warcaster has a once per game feat. And each Warcaster has a different feat. So what that does is you can call that feat and it is game changing. So for, for example, the Kador Warcaster, if she calls a feat, everybody becomes stationary and they become defense seven. So they're pretty easy to hit, they're easy to kick. Then what happens is the protectorate guy on the right, he would go and he would call his feet, which says everybody in his control area is knocked down. Same sort of thing as stationary, but it's a little bit more painful because you're landing on your bum, you need to stand up next turn. So it's pretty cool, pretty awesome. Everybody has their own feet, which is game changing. These two have a similar feet, but it's still a very potent. In that. Yeah. Uh, I must just ask, I see there's also landscape things here on, on the thing, like the trees and the, do those have effects on the game? Yeah, terrain, okay, in, this is a starter game, so you're not right. seeing it come into effect. But any other time, terrain is a big factor on this game. Uh, going through a woods, minus uh, half your movement, unless you've got a thing called Pathfinder. Uh, you can't charge over walls, you, you, unless you have Pathfinder. Standing behind a wall gives you plus four defense. Being in a woods gives you concealment, plus two defense. Mm. Terrain is a big part on this game. It, it, it blocks line of sight, so you can't shoot at the model. Um, it can give you somewhere to hide at least, and if you're really in a bad spot and you need to hide. It's, it's a very big part to play with right. terrain. I see you also have the discs that work out the damage radius. and Yeah, and the discs on the, on the left-hand side there, that is called your AoE template, area mm -hmm. of effect template. So if you've got something that shoots an AoE, so a, a big shell or something, it's going to have that template there. And then you're going to, it's 3-inch, 4-inch, 5-inch. And then also what happens in this game, if the, if the attack doesn't hit, it's not just going to automatically disappear off the board. There's still a chance that it's going to deviate and hit someone else. So if you look on the template, it's actually got a one, two, three, four, five, six. So you roll a dice, and depending on what you roll, it could come back towards you, okay. could go further away, you know, and the people getting hit by it could still take damage. So it doesn't just disappear off the game. All right. I see he's busy putting lots of tokens down too. Yeah, he's busy assigning focus. Now this is what happens in the first part of the turn, is you have to decide, because your wall of cost has got a certain amount of focus, you mm. have to... You have to think ahead. What am I going to do this turn? What do I need to boost? What do I need to attack? So with that, you need to assign focus to your jacks for them to do the awesome things that they need to do. So what he's done now is he's assigned focus to his jack, planning ahead on what he's going to do. Because what happens in this game, unlike other games where the entire army moves, the entire army attacks, every model activates individually in this game. So models can get in the way. Models have to move out the way. Those type of things. You have to think of your turn before you even start doing your turn. You have to know where you're going, what you're doing, and how you're going to play. All right, cool. Ah, uh, okay, that's good. Uh, what else is? Uh, what, what are they? Thank you, very much. Cool. cool. Thank you very much. Sorry about that, guys. No, There's no, actually, you're well. I'm hey, trying, but I, I actually don't know what's going.